All right, so with uh, the trestles, the last trestle top gluing up, I can be getting on with uh, making the actual tabletop. It's not very big, it's only 1600 long by 700 wide. Um, and underneath there are going to be a couple of ribs that the ends of the trestles butt against so, that, so you can locate them. You can take them out slightly wider, but you won't be able to bring them in board anymore. <coughs> so I want to be able to have... Uh, I'm, I'm putting ribs along there, so I don't want to make it a, a, a solid top. It's going to be really heavy. It's going to have a glass top as well as the um, uh, as well as the upholstery. So I'm going to put sort of little ribs along it and two sort of breadboard ends uh, just to keep things together. So I've got that set out for the length, which is pretty good. Rip a couple of those. As I say, I want the I want something solid for the for these kind of ribs underneath to, to screw into. So it's just a question of working out where they go. Um, not beyond the wit of man. So with the 18mm core components cut to length and the ribs ripped to width, all that's needed are the ends cutting to size. Then we should be all set to start gluing. So I think I've got all the bits I need to start gluing up this top. I'll start by doing this edge. As always, using the things we learn here on YouTube. With plenty of glue spread evenly with a foam roller, we can carefully mate the two faces together and start clamping them up just as carefully. Okay, one edge done, time for lunch. And with the glue set, we can unclamp the front edge and take care of the ends in the same way. When you've got glue on both surfaces like this, they can get a little bit squirrely, a little bit swimmy when you clamp them up. So you've got to hold them in place quite firmly. Sometimes it's worth just popping a quick screw in there to keep them together. Um, I don't think we need to do that this time. It's always worth keeping an eye on it as you clamp them up tight. I can shift around a bit. So while the uh, ends of the of the door of the table are gluing up, I'm just going to take a, a couple of quick passes across the edge of the trestle tops just to clean up where I've laminated the uh, the, the layers of plywood together, just to get a nice clean edge to those. And this is one of the huge benefits of a track saw that I find I use an awful lot. It makes life much easier. With the ends of the top unclamped, we can crack on with the remaining long edge, gluing and clamping in the usual way. And still in its clamps, I'm gluing the long ribs into the centre of the top, leaning through the clamp thicket to screw these down securely, having first double checked the length of the screws of course.
After a decent interval, the clamps can come off and I can glue on the top skin of 12mm birch. Making sure that it all lines up nicely. Before using every clamp I own, and perhaps one or two that I don't, to squeeze the edges together firmly all the way around. With the glue all set and the clamps off, I can clean up the edges of the top with a track saw and a swipe of P180 to follow up. With the top upside down, I'm using the trestles to mark out where I need the two bottom rails to be, before cutting them to length and fixing them down with glue and screws. Following up with a dab of two-pack resin filler, and once set, Everything gets another round of sanding just to clean it all up. Carefully turning the top over to finish up. You know, it occurs to me that I haven't made my usual sort of platitudes about, oh, you don't need a domino for this, you could use biscuits, you could use dowels. Um, yeah, you couldn't use biscuits for this because it's just not strong enough to make these joins. You could probably use dowels, but I don't know, can you imagine how long it would take you with a dowel jig and a drill to do, you know, well, presumably just two in each of these joins. Even, uh, well, you know, the duo doweler, there's a Maffel one and I think there's a, there's a Triton as well. Uh, I might buy that and have a look at that, it's interesting. Um, with those, they're, they're spaced at 32mm apart, so, you know, they'd be very, very wide, too wide um, for, these, for these legs. Uh, this is one of the bits of sort of, I, w I won't gild the lily and call it joinery. Um, this is an area where the domino really, really shines. Um, again, just cutting mortise and tenons for all these would have taken forever and it's, it's exactly the sort of thing where that degree of precision doesn't really matter that much. I mean if you look at carefully at some of these joins they're not great you know and that's down to me using prepared timber. Uh, it's, it's not you know it's, it's not that square, it's, it's not that accurately um, machined uh, and it does need a little bit of careful work um, to tidy things up. It's perfectly okay for this kind of thing, it would be perfectly fine if it were painted. Um, this is obviously going to be covered in, in fabric or leather or whatever. Uh, but the, the speed with which the domino can bang through, you know, two in each leg, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen per trestle uh, is quite astonishing. Uh, once you've got it set up and, and working and got your uh, your depths set. Uh, it's it's really, really well well worth having if you're doing this kind of work. Um, for most things like building carcasses, you can use biscuits or dowels. Uh, but if you need to work sort of pretty quickly, then the domino is absolutely fantastic for making this kind of thing. Um, <sighs> well, that's it for this week's video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, hope you found it interesting. It's been an interesting one for me. Um, uh, it's been a long time since I did this kind of, you know, <laughs> more accurate type of joinery that uh, can't just be covered in filler and painted. Uh, even though this is going to be covered in fabric or leather, I'm not sure which. Um, I do try and, you, know, you might be wondering, you know, why I've gone to these sort of lengths to get it looking nice and the simple fact is uh, I'm never going to see this again. Um, you know, it's the nature of, of the work that you do when you work for a, another company, an interior designer, who is then going to pass it on to somebody else and you know, possibly another, another company before it gets to the final client. And um, 
occasionally I get to see you know, a badly taken uh, you know cell phone photo of the finished object um, so I just like to try and get them looking as nice as they can be before they leave the workshop it's that simple so uh, yeah that's it um, as always hope you find it useful hope you find it interesting uh, thanks so much for watching if you liked it give it a thumbs up share it amongst your friends and if you're new here consider subscribing then you'll be notified whenever I post something new but for now uh, that's everything and I look forward to seeing you next time take care